I got this file from Malwarebazaar and it's got the name pdf.exe and it's far from a PDF. It has an icon that makes it look like it is a Skype installer, but it's also far from a Skype installer. So from Malwarebazaar, this has been tagged up as Dark Tortilla and I'm not 100% sure on what that malware is, but let's see if we can get to the bottom of what this is. Because if we look at it on something like Virus Total, a lot of other signatures come up, such as Agent Tesla and just kind of generic malicious. And I really want to get a better idea of what this malware is doing. So the good thing is it is created in .NET. So I've opened it up in DNSpy here. Now it's got the assembly description of Skype setup as well as Skype Technologies SA. But once again, this assembly trademark of a gibberish string probably helps us highlight that, hey, this ain't right. The other thing is that this uses reflection, which gives us a pretty good idea that this is gonna be performing some sort of injection, likely reflectively loading into its own process. So let's take a look at this. The first thing I wanna do is go to the entry point because this is an executable and this is what's gonna be running when the program starts. You see that this actually has a resource that it is likely pulling called Fotpelm. And if I go up and I look in the resources section, there is this fault palm here. Now, usually I would dump this and this would be the second stage. However, you might actually notice that something happens with the byte array that it gets here. And if we look into that further, it looks like there are these XOR operations using a particular key, as well as these modulus operations. So, by dumping it, we're not gonna have anything that's legible. So what I actually wanna do is create breakpoints, but rather than hard coding the breakpoint, I wanna show you something kind of cool. DNSpy has this method of doing module breakpoints. And so what we could actually do is break whenever something is trying to be loaded into memory. And that's gonna stop at the perfect moment to actually pick up on what's happening here. So let's go ahead and start the process. There are these toggles here on load, in memory, and dynamic. And there's these filters of what modules we're breaking on as well as what process it's gonna be tied to. I'm gonna tie it to the pdf.exe process that we have here. And this toggle box with a full color means that it could be true or false. This means false, and this means true. The main thing is that we want it sure, either yes or no to it being loaded, but we definitely want it to be when it is being run from memory. So let's start this process off, immediately gonna break on the create process. So now that that's broken, let's continue and just see where we break. And you can see that we broke at runtime assembly load image. And so we have this byte array here now as well under the raw assembly. And you might actually notice that this is going to be the MZ header. So if we go ahead and save this, we could actually name this stage two. And now we open this up in HXD. You will see that this has a valid PE file header and it is a valid DLL. So we could actually open this up, but because this is going to be using classes within that and methods within that, I'm gonna just continue on and see what it's doing so that I can actually ensure that it runs properly. So let's step into this. We can see the, that it is being loaded. Let's step into that. Now I wanna do a combination. I wanna step into it, but because it's going to be getting all these types and taking a bit of time, I actually just wanna step out. And now I can repeat that process of step in. So now we're doing get methods and step out. So now we're up to here. If I step in, now we're hitting uh, the first or default and we can step out of that. So we're up to here. And the thing that we wanna to get to is invoke. So let's step in and now we have invoke and we can actually see what's gonna be running in this DLL because otherwise we're not gonna know what method is gonna be running. But we can see that this is method zero that's sitting within the class pre-start one. So let's actually just go into this one now because this is gonna break us into our new DLL. So let's collapse this, collapse some of these and step into it as well. Uh, yep, so we have to go through this. So I'll step over, step over, step over until we get to where it actually performs the invoking, which is this unsafe invoke internal. And you'll notice that at that point I've gone too far. Now it's killed itself, and that's because this actually has some anti-VM checks in it as well. So let's run again and repeat the process. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna hit continue. We've got this, sure, step into it, step into it, step in, step out, step in, step out, step in, step out, step in.
offer up to this invoke. So we could actually step into this, step out of this, and it's going to be running. I'm going to break it because we've gone too far otherwise, but we know that we are in the next part of the code. So let's step over, step over, step over. Actually, let's step out of this. Uh, let's step out of this. Pause, let's step out of this. And now we're in this get field props and we're back into kind of the own methods here. We want to get out of this and we want to get to this return a underscore zero. And you can see once we break into this area, we have now broken into this new DLL and the DLL is called internal start profile. And it's got this module name of a random string. And you might actually notice that there's this 198 protective E4. So this has likely been obfuscated with something. That being said, there are a lot of interesting class names here. So path, install, startup, method, persist, decryptor, etc. And there is this anti-VMs. So really, I want to make sure that I can get past this anti-VM checks because this is likely going to be one of the first things that happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this anti-VM and I'm going to analyze it and I'm going to see what it's used by and it's used in this max prime array length so it looks like this is the actual check that takes place so i'm going to add a breakpoint here now i'm going to continue running it and see if we hit that breakpoint and we do we've just hit that breakpoint so let's step into this and we can see that now it's running all these anti-vm checks now the fact of the matter is that all of this is part of an anti-vm check and then we get to this fake method now, we're probably going to fail at this anti-VM check. That's fine because all of this is literally just, we can, we can go in and look. And the key component is that if it fails any of these particular checks, it's likely going to exit. So the process is just going to terminate here. And we can see that in this environment.exit. So let's get past all of this. Let's, we've got our, we've got our pointer here. Let's actually just change what's going to run next. So I'm just going to right click here and make it set next statement. We've just completely jumped over those methods that we don't need. So let's go ahead and step into this one now and we can continue with our analysis. So I'm gonna step over a few of these. Looks like we've got installation path. And actually if we zoom out a bit here, we can kind of see that this is just building parts of the program, building strings that are used in it or configuration. And so I want to skip over pretty much all of this as well. This looks like it's flags on whether it's going to do something or not. So displaying a fake message seems to be one of the flags that can be added. But we do have these static fields, and this is where all the configuration details are being stored. So if we expand out this, we can see, yes, it performed an anti-VM check. Yes, it did anti-sandboxy. Yes, it's got uh, an assembly associated with it, but this is null at the moment. So this would be, might be interested to see what this turns into because that might be injected into another process down the line. But if we go down, these all seem like they're gonna be filled. Uh, there is the installation file name of pdf.exe and there is this installation registry path as well. That seems to be the startup run key that's going to ensure that this runs at boot. So I probably wanna come down to around here and add a breakpoint and around here and add a breakpoint let's continue and we've managed to hit this one so that's nice so i might just step into this this looks like it's probably to do with getting the information to do with installing at startup so we can see it getting all those kind of configuration details as well so let's step over some of these and we should start to see some of this populate so hidden startup is false you can see startup folder is false. And now we've got past that and we're moving into this next method of melt, get currency symbol. And so this looks like it's to do with a temporary folder as well. So maybe this is planting itself as a temporary folder, but let's go into it and see what we can find. It is getting temporary path. Let's jump out of that. And that looks like it's actually being assigned to a value in the static fields here. And so what's interesting is you can actually see both of these. So now there's temp folder, that's our app data local temp directory, but there's also this mention of it going to be installed at syswow64. So now we already know where this is likely going to be planted for persistence. So let's keep going and see what we can find. So now we're in pass, we're gonna do that F11, shift F11 trick. So shift F11 to step out, F11 to step in. So we're on pass. 
run 2 in 32. These are just basic. So nothing of interest. And now we've got through all of that function there. And that is quite literally just determining if flag is on or off or not. And now it uses that in the next lot of checks. And so that was obviously false because if it was true, we would have been in that next lot of function there. So we're gonna jump in and look at this is me member of. And there is a chance that we could step over it, but I don't want us to find that this is actually performing some sort of function that then causes it to kick off without us stopping it. Although that might actually be in this get instantiation method based on the name. And it looks like it probably is. So I might just go ahead and take the risk here. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Aye, aye, my brother. And hopefully, I'm gonna hit break. Okay, so it actually had a wait function in there. So it's trying to pause before it continues. So we can actually continue from here with a F11, shift F11. We just need, uh, I, I don't know what the actual timeout is. Okay, we managed to get past it relatively quickly. So it's not, not too bad. So we're gonna step out. And then we've got some more stuff being decompiled. And so we get past that. That's the wait method. Stepping out of the wait method. And now we're at this get instantiation method. Whew, okay, we're making progress. So let's step into this one. And it looks like this has configuration for if it's currently installed or not. And it's checking if it's not equal to zero. So this actually might be some sort of check to see the malware might actually function in a way that if you run it, it will never do what it's supposed to do. It will only establish persistence. And then if you are running it from the persistence, then it'll do what it's supposed to do, which is a little bit smart and a little bit interesting. So let's see what we've got here. So we've got truncate, pause, build prop. So I'm just still doing, oh, I've stepped out and that's it. That's it, it stopped running there. Let's actually look at our running tasks just to see if anything funny is happening at the moment. And you can see there is, there's this ping process where it's waiting 42 seconds. And that seems to be tied to this as well, where it seems to be copying to the syswow64 directory and then, then running it. So I'm gonna kill this process tree before it can do that. And we're gonna take a look just to see if it did actually copy to the syswow64 directory. So we're looking for a pdf.exe and it doesn't look like it has. It looks like we're actually, we actually stopped that before it actually did it by killing that ping process. So by killing that tree, the ping process and everything that it was gonna follow, we actually stopped it before it was able to set up persistence. But we actually want this to have persistence set up because it seems to be doing something different depending on if it's running from SysWow64 or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the same process except we are gonna copy it over. Let's go into our desktop. Let's find the payload pdf.exe and we're just gonna plonk this in the right directory. And now we're gonna open this up in the NSPY. So I'm just gonna go view and I'm gonna collapse all the tree nodes. We are going to, ah, here we are, close old in memory modules. And now what I'm gonna do is even close off that one. And we are gonna start from here. Round two, fight. Debug the program. We're gonna break on create process just so that we can see if we got these module breakpoints. And we do, they're still there. Beautiful. None of the other breakpoints actually remain, so we're gonna have to add them in again. So let's go again, create process, hit continue. All right, we're here, we're gonna step in. We're gonna add, oh, we're gonna step in. Yep, this one we're stepping into. Uh, yep, step into, step out, step into, step out. Step into, step out, step into. And now we've got this where it's invoking it. So we step into this one. We add the break point here. We continue, we hit that break point. Now we step into, and now we have this break point where we are returning that object, but that's fine because we shouldn't even need to get to that if we just have this get hit. So we hit that F11 get targets at least desktop, cool. 
now we're actually getting somewhere. We are inside of the invoke. And now we're getting somewhere. This is all just stuff being loaded. And so this is ideally uh, getting close to where I wanted to be, but not where I actually want to be. So step out. So this is, we can actually kind of get to the next part of where we want to go. So I'm just going to zoom out here. So this is all to do with form being created. Let's continue, step out, step out, step out. Let's step out of that as well. And here we are. Now we've actually broken into where we needed to be. That took a little bit. Ideally, what I want to do is remember all of this is just building configuration details for the malware. So I want to find where the, so we go down, we get through, we run invalid path chars, we go down, we run through all of this and it was under lunar moth length. So I want to go into that and there was get build props or max prime array length. I believe it was max prime array length. We run through all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. There seems to be injection persistence, configuration details. And then we have the anti VMs check here. So this is where I want to add the breakpoint. Continue. All right, beauty, we're in. Let's step into it. Let's bypass all these checks. We set this as the next statement. Ah, let's go step into this. We're going to create a breakpoint on the current currency signal again. Currency symbol, I should say. Okay. Now we've got. This seems to actually be new stuff that's occurring that we didn't have before. So we do have this load bytes occurring and this unsafe invoke internal. I will look at the processes that are running and rather than use this, I wonder if I can go proc explorer. I got this. Yep. So this is a bit nicer. So now we should actually have our PDF process here. And we do, so that's good. So we're looking at reflection occurring. We have the name of some bytes that are being loaded. Okay, so here now we've got this running out of SysWare 64, but there is now this raw assembly that's being mentioned and it is quite long. Although I don't know what these bytes are that's mentioned here. So there is a chance that maybe this is shell code so let's actually call this uh, stage three, three dot DLL. And we're going to go back to where we are storing this stuff. And let's take a look at it in, let's go detect it easy. Okay. It's dot net again. So that's interesting. Let's collapse this, collapse this, collapse this and see if it was anything different. It's a different size and it is, we now see this other module name. That is complete gibberish. Uh, there's this dot my class. Seems to be some decompiling issues. So that's a bit interesting because this looks like it's going to be injected. And maybe there is more injection occurring from it. Interesting. Let's continue with our analysis and see what it un unravels because we do have this binary here now. So I'm just going to remove it for the time being and we'll continue so that we get the in-memory stuff. So we are going to do F11, F11, F11. And now we've hit this install method again. So we can now see the same name that we saw before. So that's going to be loaded into memory. It's the manifest module being mentioned there. We do still have the breakpoints, so if it hits memory, we should know about it and have a break on that. I am still stepping over at the moment though, because I don't want to miss. That being said, if this is injecting into memory, which it does look like it's going to be, we should see this happen. So uh, let me just look at the modules. Uh, we, we probably actually won't see it happen because it's already occurred here. It's already in memory here. So we're going to just have to continue going and see where we land. Um, I will mention, you can see the in memory dynamic and optimized tabs here. So this has got yes for in memory as we would expect to see. And if we wanted to just dump it, we, we could dump it, but we've already got it. So gets the relevant fields. Cool. 
Then we have the unsafe invoke. Now we have it getting the tights. Just waiting. I'm just waiting for you to show where we land. So I am going to add a break point there. And we're going to do step over instead. I know it's a bit risky at this stage. But we can hopefully see some time helpers. So this actually has the name here. So we're looking good. Looking good. It's getting the methods. Got the unsafe invoke stuff happening. Because the one thing I want to do is know what is going to run once this is invoked in memory. And at the moment, I'm not 100% sure on that. I know that it will be this module, but I don't know what in this module. So let's step over. Now we're here. Follow this through. Play the game. F11, Shift F11, F11, Shift F11, F11, Shift F11. So now we can see this instance being mentioned, type member name object. So we might actually have, ah, uh, so it does look like it's this YF and then it goes into this IL. So the IL is where it's gonna be starting here. This is a bit interesting. It seems like a button text has got C where, maybe that's gonna build out into C windows. Just gonna look at my running processes. See if anything unusual has started. Doesn't look like it at this stage. I might actually run prop watch just to see new starting processes. That's benign. Let's continue. Okay, now we're into a different part of this. So the interesting thing here now is that we get this text where it is building the string invoke member which is very interesting. So if we can look at where that text is used, and it does look like it's gonna be used down here. Ideally, we should be able to add a breakpoint here. And if all is well, it's just going to skip over all the junk and actually give us what we need to know. We'll just still, okay. So now we've actually got the load image like we had originally. And we have a raw assembly, which has the 4D5A. So let's save this and check to see if this is the same as what we saved before for stage 3.dll. Uh, I'm just going to name it stage 4. It might actually be stage 3 still. Uh, this is only 2 kilobytes. It is also .NET. So this is actually another, another lot of assembly which has been wrapped and is being dynamically loaded. So this goes down the rabbit hole. Although... There doesn't seem to be much here. I'm going to close this one off, remove it, and see what happens. So, looks like it's actually storing it. I mean, that's interesting. If this is a static field, it is. All this is being stored as static field. Is anything suspicious started up? No. Nope. They're all pretty much me. All right, I'm going to step out of this. This is now interesting because it is... Uh, having an entry point of kernel 32's virtual protect so this actually might be more along the lines of performing injection and i'm kind of looking through this and it would not surprise me if that's what this stuff is doing it's injecting into a process there's quite a lot of this apart from handle i wonder if we can put a breakpoint on some of this like return new thread that seems like a perfect point and invoke again seems like a perfect point but ideally we'll see this hit memory this is returning if a debugger is attached. So a, a debugger is attached here, which means this might actually kill itself. This might be an anti-debugger check. So I'm going to see if I can find out where that occurs. There is memory streams being mentioned here as well. So very likely that something is being loaded into memory. All right, there's a lot of this stuff. We just want to know what's going on. So let's see where this is being used. So I do want to add a breakpoint there. And then maybe if we get to it, we can step over it. All right, we've got invoke again. What are we invoking? Combination of two objects. Okay, we'll hit F11. This is getting the method info now. Does this mean we just had something else hit? Memory, don't recall putting a breakpoint here. It doesn't look like we did. So it looks like this might actually be when this ZM properly hits memory now, which is that fourth stage. And this actually has a compiler timestamp, which is a bit interesting, it's back in 2022. There's a bit more activity now, but this is likely all me. I wonder if I can, well, I can't just clear. Oh, 
uh, can I clear all? Yeah, all right, cool. Let's continue. These are my checks if a debugger is attached. I really hope this doesn't kill it here. There's every chance that it will, but I haven't seen any kind of just keep seemingly cycling through checks if the debugger is logging and then throws a sleeping thread back on checking if the debugger is attached it was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up and it's killed itself it's just killed itself there actually it looks like it's injected into install util.exe radio let's dump this process well i am pumped up so i do have this tool called uh, pd64 which is a process dump and so i'm actually gonna run a pd64.exe i'm gonna run it on the pid 6044 and there we go we got pretty much the full dump of everything associated with this dlo is loaded everything now we're not going to need 99 percent of this uh, and now we can kill it i'm going to kill it because we don't want it to be running we're going to go back to here and we're going to throw this as the stage four we're going to paste all these in now we're not going to need pretty much any of these dlo's there are hidden modules so possibly hold on to those but all these normal ones i'm going to delete and it's really this and this that i'm interested in because this looks like an executable the others look like a dlo what one of these is hiding some code and this one's quite large this one kind of is as well some of these hidden modules could be nothing but then again they could be more so let's go and take a look at detected easy and this is actually .NET. so once again .NET. even this is .NET. so this is going to be a bit interesting what i'm going to do is remove all these assemblies and just throw all of these in here and see what we get you can see install util yep okay cool looks like this is kind of the metadata associated with the legitimate install util this is a bit different though so this looks like it's going to be our next stage here so that's this one this is the larger of the others so all these may be not so interesting but what is definitely interesting is that next stage that we found so here we go let's jump into the next one here we begin to see something that looks like it is command and control related because we are talking about tls protocols being defined so network traffic we have uh, something that says enable keylogger so fantastic we seem to have gotten something malicious now hi it's jai here from the future for those getting deja vu you're not mistaken the reason why you're getting deja vu is what we just uncovered was agent tesla and the code looks identical to something that we looked at previously let me just show you that clip just so that you can uh, put your mind at ease go to the entry point because this is a pe file and it looks like it does have stuff to do with network communication due to the tls information being defined here let's go back anyway so we've got application run but we do have these other particular classes so this one is defined here this method is run here and it looks like there's a, a lot more methods that are being executed in this particular function so there is this screen logger that's of interest to me so even though this is deploying likely a rat and information stealer into memory whether that's agent tesla what we unraveled was actually dark tortilla which i found a really good report by secureworks and a lot of the stuff that we saw when we were going through the analysis then align perfectly to what was reported by secureworks so I will link that in the description and that's all i wanted to show you was unraveling this um, what, the, what is dark tortilla let me just let me just double check this unraveling this complex and highly configurable net based crypto so that's all let me know your thoughts feelings uh comments anything else below and i'll catch you next time